Hi, I'm George and welcome to Little Mexico, otherwise known as the Agave Farm at Kiwi Spirits, where I'll be meeting up with owner Terry a little later on. First, I'm off to Nelson to meet with Tracy at Sprig and Fern. Stick around, this is the Cellar Door New Zealand. After all the wonderful wine in Marlborough, it's time for something a bit different, so I'm heading north towards Nelson. After a quick dip in the Polaris River on the way, I arrived in Richmond, just outside Nelson, and home to Sprig and Fern Brewery. First up, I'm meeting head brewer Tracy at the original Sprig and Fern Tavern. So I've been brewing now for 37 years this year, so... Uh, congratulations. Thank you. That's quite a while. 10 years in the UK brewing and the rest here. After moving to New Zealand in 1994, Tracy was instrumental in bringing craft beer into New Zealand. There was a good sort of five or six, seven people at the time and we just set about, um, you know, creating new styles or traditional styles and with a little bit of a twist and so on. And Ken and I bought into the business and then just over time we've ended up with basically the whole thing. Along with the brewery, Sprig and Fern now has 13 taverns spread across New Zealand. Despite the expansion, this is still very much a family operation. My husband's involved in the tavern here. Uh, my daughter manages the tavern and then I've got a son who's working at the brewery and so he's doing dispatch and deliveries and then I've got another child that looks after our, our IT. Oh great. So it's a real family business, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Following her love of science in high school, at age 16 Tracy started work in a brewer laboratory. So I learned everything, the ins and outs of malt, the hops, I was analysing colours, bitterness, the head retention of your beers um, and then from the age of 18 I was trained in tasting as well. Um, so there'd be, some, there'd be some days I'd be, oh I'd taste 15 beers before breakfast, you know. That was, that was, you know, so. As an 18 year old. As an 18 year old. Pretty impressive. Today, I, you know, I still spring out of bed. I just love what I do. Mm -hmm. No two days are the same, you know, it's mm. really good. I can stand behind this bar, and I do, just seeing the customers actually enjoying the product that mm. you've made. We've got a core range of 16 products. Uh, we it's pretty extensive. Huge. Mm. So we have anything from a Pilsner, we have Best Bitters, we've got Scotch Ales, we've got the Porters, we've got West Coast IPAs, we've got English styles, we've got New Zealand styles. We've just had a Australian Pale Ale that's just finished as a limited release. Well, why don't we go and have a look around your operations centre and I can see how it all works. I'd love to show you. Okay, yeah. let's go. First things first, the ingredients. And you can't get any fresher than the local hops growing just down the road. We're about 12 minutes drive away. Uh, and then on the day of we're, we're brewing, I'll be there and we'll be actually hand selecting rows and so on and so forth. And then yeah. do you just kind of speed here and get it in there? I'll have the windows closed, I'll have the air conditioning on. I want to keep those hops as fresh as they possibly are mm. because from the moment you actually cut the vine, the hops will start to deteriorate. So it's very so, fortunate that you're so close. It's fantastic. We got two silvers back to back and then we got four gold medals back to back. Yeah, you've won a lot, lot of awards. We've won a, we've won a few, <laughs> one or two. What we're doing here, we're trying to extract all the natural sugars out of the malt, okay, because the natural sugars are going to convert to alcohol mm -hmm. and then they're going to make beer. Um, Callum here is our brewer. Hi Callum. Callum. Callum is a sixth generation brewer. So that's an achievement in itself. That's quite a history. Yeah. And then just behind me here, we've got our fermentation. So then this is where 
the wort is then going to convert to beer. So all those natural sugars in the beer are going to turn into alcohol. Uh, start to finish is going to be anywhere between five to ten days. So then we'll go through to maturation. Mm. Okay, it's a little bit chilly in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We've got about 45 tanks. Right. We we have such an extensive range. We've yeah. got 20 products on the go, both beers, ciders, ginger beers, non-alcoholic. Um, so we've got to have a tank for, for everything. After filtration and carbonation, the beer is ready to go. So these are all filled direct straight from our Bright Beer Tank. Uh, we haven't got any uh, machine to fill these, so just we hook onto the bottom of the tanks. Filled by hand. Filled by hand. Handcrafted. Yeah. Crafted, filled and dry. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and here's their most recent addition, the in-house bottling line. So it is a state-of-the-art um, guy, it's come from Italy. Um, it still looks like it's just come out of the I box. I know, it looks so shiny uh, you. The label goes onto the bottle, it gets rinsed, it gets filled, and then crowned and capped, and then onto our then rotation there it is. table. Yeah. Should we look at the warehouse now? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go to the beer. <laughs> right, come on in. Here we go. What we decided to do was introduce some colour. Um, it's beautiful. It's, it's so lovely, intricate. isn't it? So mm. th this one's a big seller for us, Tasman Reserve. It's a 6.5% strong uh, premium lager. And so we came up with two words that describe every beer. So this is a quite a bold beer. We came up with the words bold and bountiful. So And we got an artist in Wellington to basically, she's drawn these illustrations based on these two words. So, so you just gave her the words and she gave ab you Absolutely, this. Ah. absolutely. So you know, you've got Abel Tasman's face here and we've got Neptune and the tall ship on the Tasman Sea. You've got your little um, hops there. Absolutely. Um, and is this your crown? Because you do have a nickname of Queenie, don't you? Uh, my Australian brewer friends call me Queenie. Um, in New Zealand, I'm called Mother, I'm Mother of New Zealand Brewing. I'm not Grandmother yet. <laughs> so, so each of your different beers has that? Has, it has its own unique illustration. Shall we go and have a little sample of some more beers? We'd love to. Right. Let's do it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Back at the tavern, first up, the dry hopped pilsner. So we've got uh, we've got our core range pilsner. We've now got core range dry hop pilsner. Came out as a limited release, and um, it's now part of the core range. So clearly very successful. So there's got a nice, smells very good. Nice fruity passion mm. fruit, a little bit of citrus. And it's just got a really nice crisp bitterness as mm. well. So. The hops follow through right from the aroma into the palate. Yeah, it's lovely. Our next beer, we're going to have a West Coast IPA. Okay. Mm. So a lot bigger. Yeah, can you just get that hop aroma? So it's um, like a creamy. Kind yeah. Of. Mm. So I'm getting um, I'm getting a lot of pine and woody notes mm -hmm. um, that come from some of the the American hops. So this is this is 5.9 percent. We've just had a 4.9%, mm -hmm. so you've got you know more malts, a little bit more body to this beer. A bit more um, sweetness. A bit more sweetness, mm. um, but yeah, the hops, the hops just jump out of the glass mm. and then they just follow through. Mm. So a uh, West Coast IPA isn't a West Coast IPA unless you can actually see, well, I can smell the hops here, you know, yeah. so yeah, that's mm, great. Definitely tasty. Yeah. The next beer we're going to, to try is a British Scotch Ale. So, um, so we've had New Zealand, we've had American. It's a real popular beer, this one. Mm -hmm. It's Ooh, it looks delicious. Yeah, thank you. This is a traditional style. Mm -hmm. We have a tiny, tiny amount of smoked malts in here, but it just, mm. uh, it's one of those beers that needs to be served a bit warmer in mm -hmm. temperature. So the West Coast showcase hops, this is showcasing the malts. Mm -hmm. And so nice, rich caramels, um, Little bit of coffee note. That's I'm really yeah. getting that smoky. Even There's though some smoke to mm. come through. So six and a half percent, you know, can put a bit of colour in your cheeks. Mm. Mm. Nice. So it's got a nice, nice creamy texture to it, hasn't it? Nice mouthfeel. Mm. Yeah. People will say to me, Do you have a favourite? And I say, Oh, I haven't really got a favourite, but I think if you come to my place this, this one, you'd find this one in the fridge. Yeah. yeah. Right. So 
it's nice to finish a tasting with a cider because mm -hmm. it can just cleanse the palate. So, so this is, this um, is the limited. This is a limited release. Mm -hmm. So this is cranberry and orange cider. But it's five and a half percent, and it's so Yum. easy drinking. So it's got the nice tart finish coming through from mm. the cranberry. But yes, it's Which is uh, kind it's of quite with deceiving the as well. Yes, yeah. 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 Thank you so much. So there you go. Yeah, a small, small sample of your extensive yeah, range. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing them with me yeah. and thank you for the tour and the chat. Oh, I've loved having you here. It's great. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my place. Yeah. I'll be back. <laughs>
beautiful rounded oak flavours and we're finding that the Bulgarian oak has a, a lot more oak flavour than a lot of the French or the American oak. Bulgarian? Yeah, and, oh, it's, cool. uh, and it's from Bulgaria. Where are you making the spirits? Come on in here, we're, we're, just, here? we're just recreating our old distillery and these are our new stills that we've oh, just... Oh, they're beautiful. We've really just put these in and we're about to commission them. The whiskey and tequila still here mm -hmm. and the other still will be our rum and vodka still. So we've got a, a, a whole range of things. This is truly the Maserati of stills. This is a dream. It's pretty good. And uh, we just want to really drive them. We're really kind of keen to drive them. We, I bet. I got them here and realised they were actually too tall for the roof, so I had to make a hole in my roof ah. just, to, just to fit them in. And uh, But they have wonderful devices on them where we can actually free flow the whole, the whole flow. They have, you can virtually um, you know, free flow your dist distillation in these. Manual you drive. Can, it's, it's manual, yeah, you can just take it out of gear, you might say. <laughs> but it allows you to do sort of seven distillations in one, mm. and it opens up our options for making extremely clean and pure drinks. Mm. Next, Terry's got another surprise to show me. Come on down, I'll give you a little taste out of this barrel here. George. So this is your this whiskey? Is my, this is basically our whiskey. It's been aged in here for at least eight years. And what we've got here is new Bulgarian barrels fired and they're lined with a lovely honey wine that I moved from barrel to barrel. And you um, make that with your own honey? Yes, we make so that with So you're a bee wrangler? A, we're a bee wrangler, kind yeah. of wrangling bees. We, we train our bees to get the right honey. I'm going to give you a little taste out of <laughs> yeah, this. Great. because What this is is technically a straight from the barrel taste of a, a honey single barrel malt whiskey. Yum. And here we are, just run your finger down this and have a little lick of this okay. off the end of your finger. So I just, what, yeah, do that'll that? Do. Yeah, try that. And it's just, okay. it's 64% at least, I'll give you another one. Yeah, I, I that, need to revisit. Yeah. So how long has this been in the barrel? We continually sort of monitor it by just tasting it and then working it. Um, it's a wonderful environment for ageing whisky here because we get warm, nice warm weather. They're going to age faster, that's mm -hmm. why rum has that you know, that thing mm. going on with the hot, hot climates. So you've got your whiskey, you've got your rum, but you have tequila. We have tequila. Would you like to come and see a tequila plantation? I would love to. Then I think we might drive to do this one. Okay. And um, as long as you, know, you can hold on tight, well, let's have a go. Shall I'm ready. We? Cheers. <laughs> let's go. There you are, George. Come on for a ride this one. Sure. Nice easy. There we go. Thank you. It's a bit easier than walking for us, OK? <laughs> Here right. I go. I have no license on it. <laughs> So you've got your babies? George, we planted only these ones probably a few weeks ago. They only just acclimatised in here. Um, we'll be harvesting one, one bay per year. These will be ready within two to three years. They'll be So how big will they grow? They'll get up to about 1.8 metres tall. Okay. And they have a, a very big heart in the bottom of them. It, it can be as heavy as 40 kilos. And like in the middle of the plant? And it's, like a, it's called a piner and it's like a big pineapple. So we cut all the outside leaves off and mm -hmm. that's what we cook for three days in a steam oven uh, versus mezcal, which is baked in an oven. Tequila is steamed. Right. But this is a Pacific tequila cactus. So we tried everything to make it as authentic as we can as far as our processes go. And once again, nobody has told us the processes. Um, You've just figured or it out. what yeast to use and... Um, and you and figured this out by... Just, uh, just really, you know, Google it um, <laughs> as part of it, but also, you know, a lot of intuition and a lot mm. of learning and a little bit of sort of just feeling it out as you go. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think I just lucked out and, and got lucky and got it right in the beginning. And that's why we've, you know, made award-winning tequila and mm. um, that we call tequiwi, by the way. Yes. There's something unique about one of our soils the, the climate that we grow it in, it's not 
on a high plateau like it is in Mexico growing on uh, volcanic soils. Mm -hmm. We're down here on wonderful alluvial soils growing at sea level. So, and we're growing on an island, mm. which is completely different. We don't really know why they're doing so well, but if you look here, this is what's happening to us, where you'll get these pups and they're all coming up. Oh, um, they're just um, going they gangbusters. They are going absolutely ballistic in here. They actually love to be strained. We give mm. them a eight hours of drip feed once a week. Otherwise, no fertilizer, no other loving. We come in and talk to them occasionally, um, you know, and I, we love coming in here in winter because it's actually lovely and warm. Yeah, it's and pretty it's toasty our, in here. It's a, it, we've actually keep blowing thermometers up in here, so that means it's getting up above 40, 45 degrees in here at times. So, and, uh, You'd need a lime and soda after that. We do need a lime and soda. And look, let's, I'll take you through and you have a look at the, the nursery. Yeah. We, we were developing them all mm -hmm. and come on with me. Next up, a quick look inside the nursery. So you're not just growing agave? No, we, we grow a lot of plants for landscaping the property with as well. There's more of the seedlings for the tequila, yes. which are all of these wonderful rows here. We really enjoy the fact that we actually landscape ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't buy plants in. We grow all plants for the place. A lot of these things right down to banana trees, um, bird of paradise plants. Uh, there's um, So you there's propagate these yourself? Propagate these ourselves, yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm blown away with everything Terry is doing here in Golden Bay and learning about how he makes his spirits is making me want to taste them even more. And what better way to start than with the tequiwi. Here it is. So this is your 100% agave spirit. This is exactly what it is. We call it tequiwi rather than tequila. Mm -hmm. it, it was a learning curve because we had some very basic concepts of what to do with it. But we, we muddled through and... You had some fairly basic I, equipment too. I would call it very basic. We started <laughs> off with a, an oven that I built that was, there's a tequila for you. you. The oven that I built was three meters long, um, a steam oven, and we would cut the hearts from the, from the plants out and put them in there to cook it. They would stay in there for three days. We then put them into a garden mulcher. And once <laughs> like again, a standard, standard garden mulcher garden because mulch. in Mexico they have a very big uh, mangles that they put them through. From the garden mulcher after it was cooked, we then actually put it in the ringer washing machine because we had to get the fibres out. Like an old school. Like grandma's ringer washing machine. And we we then felt around with our arms. We actually used um, artificial insemination gloves because we had to be <laughs> right up to our elbows in this and tie them at the back. And the process was kind of weird because you'd be working in this area and your whole face could go numb from some element in the in the brew. In the agave? Yeah, yeah we called it numb lips. <laughs> and because you could stand there and talk, but your lips weren't moving. But, could... but from there, we created a, a wonderful brew, and that was then put into a tank to, um, to ferment, mm -hmm. and from there we then put it into the still. But please, try a, try a little taste of yeah. it. I'll give you something that's lovely to follow it, okay. which will be my tangelo liqueur, mm -hmm. um, made from our local tangelos. It's a mellow kind of... It's a very soft, soft rounded mm. flavour and many, many things that are different about that tequila. How's the taste? It's so easy to drink. It's too smooth, huh? It's so smooth. And just put that on your tongue now after we taste the tequila and tell me what you feel. Okay. It rounds out. Woo! Doesn't that round out a tequila? It's a nice citrusy little... Yeah, so we, we blast. It's kind of got mm. that little edge of the Mexican lime going on. Mm. But now just keep sipping your tequila and keep sipping that. Okay. And, um, and tell us about this. This is the... Ta Tangelo is a, is a lovely liqueur that we make. It's one of many. It's called, it's a tequila liqueur, so it goes with the tequila itself. And it's got honey. It's also. got a little bit of edge of honey going mm. on with it. But what it really is, is tangelos, which are a cross between a grapefruit and a mandarin. Mm. And we patiently make a wine from that. 
that we then turn into a liqueur. It's lighter than that though. It's yeah, got... it's not so sweet, mm. it's not so sickly, mm. but I, I love it to have beside my tequila as I sip the two of them. Mm. And it's it's almost like a two glass cocktail, mm. um, except you know you don't mix them, you're just tasting the pure form of it's each one. It's a deconstructed cocktail. It's a deconstructed cocktail. And then we've got a, a lovely gin made from New Zealand Botanicals. Yeah, so this is the one that you've used. What we use the... totra berries. We take the, the berries from a female totra tree and it's no easy task to tell which is the girl and which is the boy in the female totra trees. <laughs> but the totra berry is very much of a, a, it's very like a juniper berry. We also have kakatea berries in here. Those are just two of the little botanicals and things that we use from our forest in New Zealand. Um, so this is really giving a sense of place. It's, and... it's, our, it's our local gin. Mm. But this you'll find is, is quite an interesting soft gin. different eh? yeah it is and we've got a lot of places that are making what I call lollipop gins where they're you know flavored with something pink or they're flavored with some other flavor hiding the gin mm. gin is a clean precise drink mm. it is not made really to be lollipop mm. I've well, got a I whole think range this would of go really well in a dry martini actually. it actually makes a great martini mm. um, we create these lovely drinks from what's within our environment mm. uh, rather than trying to um, search the world for the rarest you know thing you can put into your drink and make that we want to make things from our Tawa mm. here we don't want to copy we want to make uniquely New Zealand drinks hence we're, our whiskey is very much a New Zealand whiskey yeah there's a lovely whiskey for you to try mm. new concept of a very old drink mm. you get those those honey notes it's, it's, it's an extremely delicate whiskey. Mm. I may join you for one of those actually. Yeah, good one. I think that's what I should have. I think so. So cheers. Cheers. And really nice to meet you and yeah. thank you for coming to visit us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs>